Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So let's get started with Spring Data JPA. So in this Spring Boot playlist, we have covered a lot of things, a lot of basic concepts we have covered. We have covered most of the annotations and concepts like Spring AOP and transactions. Now it is time to jump to database connectivity side, right? So you have an application, you need some kind of database, right? So that is when Spring Data JPA comes into picture. So in this video, we are going to have kind of an introduction of Spring Data JPA. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So this is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So let's just go back and let's see this diagram, right? This might be a familiar diagram of most of you, right? Because I have covered this particular diagram in one of my video when we saw layered architecture initially, right? Now, when we were looking into layered architecture, we saw that inside our Spring Boot application, we have this controller layer, service layer and repository layer, right? Now, whenever we play along with some kind of data or object data inside our application, we need some kind of database to store it, right? We need some kind of database to hold that data, right? Because each time when you reload your application, the data that you store locally inside your project will be scrapped, right? You will not be able to retain that. So the basic use case is basically database, right? We all know this. Until now in this series, we have made use of H2 database, right? And we have done a lot of database operations as well, but we haven't looked into Spring Data JPA basics yet. Now, when your repository layer is talking to database, now whenever your repository layer is talking to your database, there should be some kind of connectivity between these two, right? There should be some kind of connectivity between your Java application and your database, right? Database can be anything, right? It can be SQL database, it can be H2 database, it can be any NoSQL database like Couchbase or it can be any cloud database like DynamoDB, right? There should be some kind of connection between your repository layer and your database. That is your Spring application and your database, right? Now let's go back in time and let's see the traditional way of doing this. So if you build any traditional application without Spring Boot framework, then Still, you will be able to connect to database, right? Still, you will be able to connect to this particular database through your Java application. Now, how they used to do it? They used to do it by something called as JDBC, right? JDBC, that is Java database connection, right? Now, when it comes to Java database connection, you will be able to connect to your database by using few simple steps, right? So these are basically the steps that you need to take, right? So first, you will need to load drivers, right? So there will be some kind of JDBC drivers that you need to load. After that, you need to establish a connection between your database by using classes like driver manager, right? After that, you need to create SQL queries, right? You will need to create kind of a query inside your Java application. You need to prepare a statement. So there will be something called a statement and prepared statement. You will need to prepare it according to your use case, right? You need to actually write a queries that insert into table name, then values and blah, 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 like that, right? Here another language comes into picture, right? I'm talking about SQL in this case. You will need to actually write a queries when you prepare a statement, right? After that, that query might need some parameters. So you have your object, right? You have your entity or object. Those entity must be mapped to this query, right? And those parameters needs to be set, right? So you need to write a lot of code in order to do that. And at the end, after this step, you have the option to execute your query that will actually hit that query on that respective database and insert your data or take the data from the database right basically crude operations right nothing else now when spring framework came into picture there is something called as spring jdbc that came into picture right now this is a framework which automate a lot of these things for you right but it's still a jdbc connection but it will automate this boilerplate code for you right so i'm talking about this spring data jdbc right so this will automate a lot for you, but it is still not JPA, right? So we are moving in a direction of JPA now, right? Now, after that, we need to understand the concept of ORM, right? What exactly is ORM? So ORM is basically object relational mapping. The term itself defines what exactly it is, right? The relationship between your object, your Java object or the object inside your object oriented programming. It can be any programming, right? And the relational database that you have for example sql right so it's a mapping between your object and relational database now when you are defining your java object your java object will have some kind of fields right let's say if you're talking about user you will have user id username email id age and blah 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 right lot lot more things you will have right now user is your kind of table and the field inside it will be the columns of the table right so id name user like that right for example, you have this table, 
you have the user id and you have the user name so it looks kind of a direct mapping between your this particular object and this table right isn't it at the end what you are going to do you are going to perform crude operations only right so why we need to do all these things right why we need to establish connection blah 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 blah, blah. why the mapping cannot be a direct with your object so that is when orm comes into picture it will provide the direct mapping between your entity or your model or your java object with your table right for example if you go to code let me just zoom it a bit so if you go to your code you will be able to see that there is a book object book will have id title author and genre right now these can be direct columns inside your table and your table can be book right so this object to this particular table mapping is basically orm right now in java the object can be anything right now for that particular object the respective table should be created inside your database right the entries should be added inside your database automatically right the data should be retrieved the data should be updated and deleted now how these operations are going to happen right who is going to take care of creating this table who is going to retrieve the data who is going to update delete the data inside this table who is going to manage all these things right who is going to manage that is when frameworks comes into picture who is going to automate all of these things for us right now the famous framework for orm is hibernate you might have heard hibernate name many times right so you have different kind of frameworks basically hibernate is one of them we have hibernate we have eclipse link we have open jpa right we have many frameworks right now most famous is basically hibernate so if you need to use orm somewhere you can go with hibernate this is a very good framework so it's basically object relational mapping framework right now that is orm and hibernate for us now let's go ahead and discuss jpa so what exactly is jpa jpa is basically java persistence api now jpa is not a framework jpa is not a framework like hibernate jpa is basically a specification jpa is basically specification provided by java in order to manage relational data inside your java application by using object oriented programming principles right so this is kind of a specification provided by java in order to manage relational data inside your spring applications right now again this is not a framework this is a set of interfaces or we can say set of guidelines right this needs a implementation right this needs a implementation right what is the implementation implementation is again hibernate so hibernate is basically implementation of persistence api java persistence api as this is a specification this is not an interface this guy will need kind of a implementation right so hibernate is basically implementation of jpa right and in turn jpa is basically using jdbc in order to do database connection right so it is kind of a hierarchy right jpa internal uses hibernate and jdbc like that now you may have question why do we exactly need jpa and why not hibernate right if jpa is internally using hibernate why not to use it directly right you can use no one is stopping you right but in case if you need to migrate away from hibernate then you will need to do hell lot of changes inside your application because jpa is kind of a standard practice right everyone is using it right it is kind of an abstraction layer on top of your hibernate right it is simplifying stuff for you it is a standardized api and works with different providers like hibernate is one kind of one provider there may be any other provider right so jpa is basically standardized api which can work with many other providers like hibernate you can use anything else as well now this is basically jpa right now when it comes to spring data jpa right this is different from this jpa spring data jpa is basically framework provided by your spring framework right in order to do your database connections right so if you go ahead and check this now then you have your spring boot application right you have your spring boot application and this is basically jpa right so if you see over here spring data jpa is kind of a layer of abstraction on top of your jpa right it's a layer of abstraction which will provide you a lot of interfaces okay you can directly make use of those interfaces inside your application you don't even need to provide the implementation because the implementation is handled by jpa and hibernate internally right now spring data jpa is abstraction which uses jpa and jpa we know that it needs a implementation and implementation will be hibernate in this case and hibernate will in turn use jdbc and jdbc will do database connections and manage everything for you right so this is how spring data jpa flow will look like
Spring Data JPA will make your crude operations very easy as it's a layer of abstraction on top of JPA, right? It simplifies crude operations by providing interfaces like crude repository, JPA repository, and paging and sorting repository, right? So all these repositories we are going to look into when we actually implement this, right? There are many things to look into when we actually jump inside the implementation of JPA, right? So that is something we are going to look into the next video. We are actually going to make use of H2 database and make use of Spring Data JPA in order to do database operations, crude operations by using Spring Data JPA, right? So this is basically quick introduction of Spring Data JPA and this is basically based off our next video of implementation, right? So that's it for this video. If you don't want to miss implementation video, don't forget to subscribe to Code Snippet. Share this video with your friends so that they are also aware of what exactly is Spring Data JPA. That's it for this video. See you in the next video.